Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So, I had a few moments in the past couple of weeks where I'm not even sure what started it. I think I wanted to order and support my local indie bookstores, Page One and Anderson's. And then I'm like, let me go to Book Outlet. I haven't been to Book Outlet in a while. And lo and behold, five orders later, I have streams of books coming. So, I, you know what? It's the... <laughs> I can get a book for three to seven dollars triggered something in my brain and there we have it so I thought it would be fun to essentially play like a blind date with a book game and <laughs> it's gonna be for me too because I essentially used my want to read list on Goodreads and some of those books have been there forever I just checked the titles so I don't even remember what the heck most of these books are about so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick read on the um, description to myself. Don't worry, I'll edit that out. You all won't have to sit here. And then I'm just going to describe the book without showing to you first, just to see if it catches your interest. And you may be surprised. And then I'll tell you what book it is. That way, if you decide you want to order it, you can. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first book is a nonfiction memoir that came out in 2018. And it is written by a black professor, this should be a big clue, about facing the impact of holding secrets on a black mind and body and then a nation and moral collapse. Do you know what this book is? You don't. It is a heavy by Kais or Kees Lehman. So this book actually was one of New York Times most 100 hundred notable books um, for 2018 and yeah it's been sitting on my TBR probably since then so finally got it in house and hopefully I can get it read here soon okay next book the next book is a work of classic fiction that came out in 1948 and it is about a plague that hits the town a coastal town in Africa the plague <laughs> by Albert Camus. So this is one I've been hearing a lot about lately with COVID and I thankfully was able to find it. And uh, yeah, because at one point, I think on Amazon, you couldn't get a copy of this book um, outside of like for several hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, this is apparently a classic and you can't even there. Now you can kind of see the title in my copy. Need to read it. All right, horror fans. So the next book was a horror novel. I believe it came was published in 2000, but prior to that, it was just kind of being passed around, and it did not include all of the components that are in this published book now at that time. And it essentially became a cult classic, and I'm curious if you're guessing which where this is going, um, and eventually, due to having that following, got itself published. The story itself is about a family that moves into a home and discovers that their home is bigger on the inside than on the outside. I've heard seriously mixed things about this book. It is apparently quite a challenge to read, which is intentional on the author's part. So I really see this as being quite an experience, not just even about the book itself. And if you haven't guessed it already, that is The House of Leaves by Mark Z. Dan Daniel Lefsky. I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, there it is, a cult classic and needed to get on my bookshelf. So our next book is fiction that is set in Ireland and it came out in 2019. This book is about um, a main character, an older gentleman, I believe he's around 80 some years old, who is sitting in a bar. And he's usually at this bar and he's usually alone and keeps to himself. But this particular night of the book, um, he proceeds to give five toasts to five different people in the course of his lifetime. And as he does so, we get to learn about this man and his life. And it sounds so intriguing. So if you've guessed, I don't know, this book is When All Is Said by Anne Griffin. Our next book is nonfiction, and it was published in 2018 by an investigative journalist who took a job for $9 an hour as a prison guard, an entry-level job. They knew who he was, um, so he went into the job in this prison in Louisiana, not undercover, it was all out in the open, and worked about four months there until he was let go. And that led to his writing of this story and what he witnessed and experienced, and that book is American Prison 
um, A Reporter's Undercover Journey into the Business of Punishment by Shane Bauer. So our next book is a thriller mystery that is actually the third book in a series. Here's a big clue. By a well-known author who wrote the series using a pseudonym, a different name. I think that's a pseudonym. I'm having a moment. Need more coffee. So this, our main character, is a private investigator. He has um, a colleague working for him, and they receive a box with a severed leg in it. Uh, the police are essentially looking into suspects from his past, and they really hyper-focus in on one, but he does not think that is the correct one. So him and his colleague essentially take the investigations into their own, or the investigation, into their own hands to uncover who's done this gruesome thing, and that is Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. J.K. Rowling, right? Looking forward to this one. The first two in the series, um, if you have not started this, Corman, Corman, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, is The Cuckoo's Calling is the first, and then The Silkworm is the second. So the next book is the second book in a series that I fell in love with. I got the first book thanks to a book subscription box a couple years ago. And that book is it's a fiction mystery thriller. Um, and it is focused on our main character who has taken over as the sheriff in this town. And this town, the prior sheriff and the town itself is very corrupt. And uh, so he's struggling with um, basically negotiating those waters and getting the town to, um, you know, kind of get in line to a reasonable sense with the law. <laughs> and so there's a murder. And the FBI gets involved, and so he's trying to negotiate all of this in the in the part uh, in the beginning. Uh, High White Sun by J. Scott Todd. The Far Empty was the first book that I had gotten in a book box, and maybe it's been three years. And you guys, it blew me away, and I immediately put this author and any of his follow-up books on my t TBR list, and that's where I finally got it. So I am looking forward to that. This book. So our next book is actually a follow-up to one of the ones I've already covered, and I did not realize it because I have no idea what I ordered. So I'm really excited, and if you're looking for a series, here's a good one, a good opportunity for you. So in this book, we have our <clears throat> private investigator, who is um, basically a man comes to see him, um, a younger man who, as a um, says as a child, he's witnessed a crime and he's very agitated. And in the middle of talking to our private investigator, he just essentially starts to panic and bolts out of the office. And our private investigator is very intrigued and caught up in the story and decides to try to look into who this boy, young man is and his life and solve the crime. So you probably guessed it, but we are looking at Robert Galbraith again. Uh, what is it? C Cormoran Strike, num book number four in the series, Lethal White. It's a fun one. Really fun character if you haven't read these. Um, in your private investigators, mysteries, just fun. Oh, I just read the description for this book and I'm so excited. I'm like, how did I even hear about this? I don't know. Um, so our next book was published in 20, I think it was 15 or 18, now I forgot. And it is a historical fiction. It's 2015 publication. And our main character is found as an infant, this is set in England, on an estate, a wealthy estate, in the snow back in 1831. And the young girl that finds her is the daughter of the wealthy family that lives on the estate and basically convinces the family to keep the infant that's found and raise her as part I wouldn't say part of the family, but to raise her. And the two become close, as if they were sisters. Um, as they grow up, though, the parents, very cold, indifferent to the infant, um, the girl, our main character. She loses her ad adopted sister, we'll say, um, who passes away and leaves her a letter. So if you're into scavenger hunts, you're going to like this one. So the letter basically takes her, our main character, around England, um, while she goes letter from letter finding the next one that her sister has left for her um, that just talk about secrets and um, all kinds of things about the the background and f ties to her friend slash, slash sister. And that book is Amy Snow. Let's get it up here so you can actually see it. 
by Tracy Reese. Excited for this one. I'm like, how did I hear this? Did one of you tell me about it? Maybe I don't know. But yeah, this one sounds really good. Okay, got one more for you. Okay, my last book for this haul and this video um, was published in 2012, I believe it was. And this book is set in Cambodia. Yeah, 2012. So our, our main character is the daughter of a family that is rather wealthy, um, and Cambodia is experiencing um, essentially a civil war um, that's starting in the capital. And it disrupts our main character, well, it disrupts Cambodia, but it definitely disrupts, our, the focus is on our main character's life, deaths among the family, starvation, um, so just living in a time of war, essentially. And that is, if you have not guessed it already, In the Shadow of the Banyan by Vede Ratner. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. This book was one that I, I feel like we probably, most of us have heard of. Um, it was a Penn Hemingway finalist. Um, it just, it made a lot of um, good noise when it was first came out. So i um, finally getting this one actually on my real TBR shelf. So essentially what that does for me is it means I, when I'm ready to read, I can go shopping. I even organized all my TBR books by genre. I've got another bookshelf over there. So they're they're ready for selection. I'm my best customer. <laughs> I get to play bookstore and sell to myself. All right. If any of these books grabbed your attention, I will have links below to both Amazon and bookshop.org, um, which are affiliate links. So no, I do receive a small percent. So thank you if you choose to use them. But if not, um, I hope you found some great ideas here for your reading as well. And um, happy reading. And there is more coming. So we'll have more fun. Happy reading. <laughs>